Hello my friend and welcome to Python for Visual Effects, Animation and Games in Nuke. My name is Alexander Richter and today we are looking at all the chapter of our 8 weeks journey. The main focus of this masterclass is to teach current and future artists in visual effects, animation and games the essentials of scripting in Nuke while focusing on using it for our professional work. This can also be a first step to become a technical artist or technical director. During the first five weeks of this masterclass, we establish the fundamentals of Python, while in the final three weeks, we apply this knowledge to create and manipulate Nuke using Python. Each week consists of a 60 to 90 minutes video lecture supplemented with a finishing assignment. This allows you to practice the week's lecture while getting a 5 to 15 minutes personal feedback video of how you can improve in the future. We also have a weekly live Q&A together in which each student is encouraged to ask questions. Every Q&A session will be recorded for a later rewatch or if you were not able to participate. Additionally, you will be joining our incredible Discord community to interact with the current and alumni group. After teaching and coaching online for years now, the combination of on-demand videos, practice assignments, personal feedback and being able to ask questions during the Q&A and in our community has crystallized as one of the most effective ways to learn a skill like scripting. Let us dive into the overview of each week's content. Today we are starting with week 1 introduction. First, we begin with the About section, where I introduce myself, my previous work and how and why I started to work with Python. Next, we will talk about the artist of the 21st century, which also introduces the concept of why. Every one of us has a specific reason why he is taking this course, but it's still supportive and motivational to understand what it can mean to be an artist of the 21st century and how much impact Python or scripting in itself will have on your future work. The next part is about Python basics. So basically we dive into what exactly a scripting language is, compare them to programming languages, how can we use them, what are the benefits and what are the differences between the Python versions. Finally, we will dive into the coding part in Python. The first section will be about comments and prints, which are the absolute fundamentals you have to know if you want to start with Python itself. Then we will have a look at all the different data types we need to handle information. And last but not least, for this week, we look into variables which are one of the soil parts of any scripting or programming languages to handle the previous data types. Very important to point out, especially on week one, is that we will take it step by step, compared to a lot of videos you may see in other scripting courses or on YouTube. We will start with the absolute basics while still being practical. The second point, which is very important since this course is focused on a specific goal of you being able to script, we will only focus on information and script parts that will benefit your end goal. Store data. This week we will be looking at our script editor to have a basic understanding of the tools we are using. Then we dive back into coding and explore lists and dictionaries which are, as you can imagine, an essential part of Python. We also learn the difference between the two and how to use them appropriately. Afterwards, we discover some useful functions and expressions we need to manipulate the newly learned data types from this and last week. We wrap up this week with pseudocode. What is pseudocode? Where do we use it? And what are the benefits of pseudocode instead of already writing Python code from the beginning? Loops and ifs. First, we finally explore loops, which will give us an enormous function to create batch process and more complex scripts. I was waiting to teach this topic from the beginning since it is simple enough, but quite essential for most scripts we will create in the future. Next, we explore indentations and how grouping and association work in Python compared to programming languages like C++. This one is closely tied to the loop section. We then look into how to compare data types to be ready for our next topic, if and else. 
where we create statements of when specific code parts should be executed and what happens if nothing is true. This is followed up by combining loops and ifs to show their true power and add some additional function to enhance both together. Escape characters will add an additional layer to our strings and will become a necessity the moment we have to handle Windows paths, so I decided to tackle them here. Functions and names. First we explore the awaited topic. I mentioned functions multiple times during this course already. Now we will have a look into what functions are and how we really use them in Python. Essentially this week focuses mostly on functions since they are vital for our future workflow and allow us to create more complex scripts which we will need when we move on through the course. We follow this up with setting some naming rules. Essentially we will have a look into how and why we should name variables and functions in a specific way which will help us to write more professional and clear code in the future. Since we already talked about indentations and grouping, we expanded this week by looking into scope, local and global variables to understand how the grouping affects the life cycle of variables. As promised, we revisit pseudocode and look at a small script we could have been asked to write for our work to manipulate the scene. A small teaser of what to come in week 6 when we finally use Python in context. Import and debug. We start this week with imports. Imports allow us to use Python scripts from different sources, which in return means we will be able to distribute our script through multiple files. This is a game changer in terms of creating more complex and reusable scripts and apps in the future, similar to functions. While we are talking about files, we have a brief look into Python files themselves and what are Pyke files. Next. We explore errors and tracebacks and find out how to read and debug them properly. Error handling is one of the most important skills in scripting and programming. That is why we look into common exceptions, what they mean and how to avoid or fix them. Additionally, we add the concept of try and accept which allows us to handle potential errors and either catch them or end our script properly without destroying our scene with corrupted data. This week also remarks the finishing line for our basic Python introduction. We have tackled all the important bleeps and bloops you have to know to use Python successfully. We will conclude with some interesting remarks regarding topics that could be helpful to us when we arrive at a more advanced state of scripting. Week 6 – Nuke API Before we can start to script in Nuke, we have to talk about the gateway into Nuke, the Nuke API. What is an API and how do we access ours to make our Python code work? Next, we look into our most important tool, the Nuke Script Editor. It will allow us to write and execute Python code in Nuke. Since nodes are the essential part of compositing in Nuke, we start by learning how to create, delete, modify, connect and disconnect nodes with each other using Python. Next, we talk about scene handling, save, load, and import. Finally, we round up this week with the powerful expressions and how to use them via TCL and Python. Nuke scripts. We start this week with some additional functions. I've looked through the most common functions that help me write my apps and scripts in Nuke and added them to this week's lecture. By now, it should be clear that we're mostly just shopping for new functions in Nuke, while their syntax is defined by Python. Next, we put our pipeline hat on and look into the project settings, accessing hidden nodes and making callbacks that react to the artist's actions. Writing scripts is great and all, but we also have to give the artist the opportunity to actually use them. So instead of sending code snippets, we create simple to access menus, toolbars and right click options to call our scripts. Init.py and menu.py will help us to set them up during the nuke start, which adds a nifty pipeline element to our work. Finally, we wrap up this week by looking into the three biggest workflow pillars that we now can use to help our and other compositors work. Today, we finally look into the user interface, or UI for short. We will especially focus on the Nuke UI, since it is the simplest one we can use. First, we start visually customizing the content of our node graph by modifying the look and feel of our nodes. 
Then we go a step further and create our own custom node with custom knobs that we can also link together to create a personal gizmo. Next, we look into the simplest form of UI, the pop-up. Pop-ups allow us an easy way to communicate with the user and even ask him for inputs. Afterwards, we roll up our sleeves to create our own custom UI, which is called Panel in Nuke. Similar to notes, we can fill them with individual input sections, pull downs, checkboxes, and buttons, whatever our heart desires. Finally, we compare the Nuke UI with the more advanced PySet 2 and wrap up our Nuke journey with the last assignment in which we develop the application that we set up to create on week one. Let's start. You can find the full masterclass on alexanderrichtertd.com or click the link in the description. See you on the next video.